Good afternoon, dear learners. I am Glarmina, Academic Counselor, Igno RC Coaching 14000. So, our course is MPC 004 Advanced Social Psychology. In the previous session, we went through Unit 2, that is Social Cognition Attribution Theory. So, now we can go to Unit 3. It's methods of social psychology. So methodology, it involves the development of procedures for making various kinds of observations which provide the building blocks for theories and generalizations. So it refers to all aspects of the implementation of methods. So under method, this methodology is coming. The method is meant for formulating the investigation. So in this unit, we can see about various characteristics, features of social psychology methodology, needs and aims of social psychological research, how we can differentiate between common sense explanations and scientific explanations can differentiate between theoretical ap and applied research. We can analyze various methods used in social psychology and we can explain meta-analysis. So social psychological approach. In this approach we can see three major operations. Careful collection of an uh, observation of or data. So we are carefully collecting the data and we are orderly integrating these observations into hypothesis and theories and then we test the adequacy of these hypotheses and theories in terms of whether they can successfully predict future observations. So it is based on observation and experience than pure logic. So methods, that is how we are formulating the investigation. There are many methods of data collection. These things you are study, uh, you are studying in detail in research methodology paper. So we can fastly go through this session, this section. So methods of data collection. We can collect data through observation methods by studying the previous documents through questionnaires, interview, testing, experiment, etc. And the methods can be analyzed through various statistical methods like correlational and factor analysis. And there are logical and theoretical ways also for construction of typology and various means of explanations, etc. So our discussion in this chapter is limited to the following methods. So there are observational method, correlational method, experimental method and ethnography method. These are the four methods which are discussing in this chapter. So first one is observational method. So it is the old method of social psychology. We simply observe the phenomena under study as it occurs naturally. So this method plays a very important role in the collection of data on overt behavior and the actions of individuals. So the method proceeds in two stages like dis describing behaviors from description to causes. So the behavior may have many causes. So we are analyzing these causes after observing the behaviors. And it can be participant and non-participant observation and can be informal or un informal or formal structured or unstructured one. All this you have studied before in research methodology paper. Informal method of observation 
we can record the actions relevant to the research question without disturbing the occurrence of behavior in non participant observation we record the people's behavior but do not actually participate in their activities it is meant for getting genuine results genuine behaviors next comes correlational method here we are finding the relationship between two or more variables under study such that the systematic increase or decrease in the magnitude of one variable is accompanied by systematic increase or decrease in the magnitude of the other variables so we are finding the relationship between the variables of interest to the researcher and there are three different types of correlations we we'll get positive correlation negative correlation and zero correlation in positive correlation as one variable in, in, increases the other also increases like for example income and happiness these are positively connected and if we see that if money is associated with lower happiness then we can say that it is negatively correlated and if there is no if it does not go along with happiness then we can say it is as zero correlation and the degree of relationship is assessed mathematically and is expressed as a correlation coefficient ranging from plus 1 to minus 1 degree then comes the experimental method which is the dominant research method for testing theories that predict the causal relationship between variables only from this experimental method we can find the cause and effect relationship and in the booklet in the study material you can see various terminologies that can and that is used in experimental research like experiment hypothesis variable independent variable dependent variable experimental group control group statistics measurement and random assignments and there is one method is called quasi experimental method in which the researcher has less than complete control the lack of control over the testing arises from the very fact that it is an everyday life setting but the re- and the benefit is the realism of the setting is relatively high and the control will be relatively low and various experimental designs yeah you may know like there is one shot design post test control group design pre test post test design factorial designs are there all you have studied in detail then comes the threats to validity in experimental research validity refers to the extent to which a method of measurement measures what it is supposed to measure so there is internal construct and external validity and the validity of an experiment may be threatened due to the following reasons like confounding variables then confounded variables it is caused it is a failure to separate two variables with the results that their effects cannot be independently ascertained for example if in an experiment on memory and age all all the older participants are female and all the younger are male then sex and age are confounded and the memory data cannot be properly interpreted so sex and age are the confounding variables then the another threat is social desirability in this case the participants are usually keen to be seen in a positive light so they feel reluctant to provide honest genuine reports then comes the demand characteristics 
here the individuals who know that they are being studied will often be curious about what the experimenter is looking at and what types of resp responses are expected then comes the experimenter expectancy effect here the experimenter's own hypothesis or expectation affect the outcome of the research so participant will behave in such a way as to confirm the hypothesis and to avoid these stress i mean these threats there are many methods like post experimental enquiry will give like the participant is carefully interviewed after participation in an experiment then comes obtrusive measures also called non reactive measure here the participant is not aware of and which therefore cannot influence his or her behavior then comes the cover story it is a false but supposedly plausible explanation of the purpose of an experiment so we will just limit the operation of demand characteristics through this cover story next is the uh, method of blinding there is single blind procedure and double blind procedure it is to reduce the experimenter expectancy effect that the condition will not be uh, and the participant will not be known about the experiment before next comes the ethnographic method it comes under qualitative research ethnography the word means writing about people it literally means a portrait of a people it is a written description of a particular culture customs beliefs and behaviors based on information collected through field work it is art and science of describing a group or culture here we gather the information through sources like interviews observations conversations and previous documents so we are studying the behavior in everyday context in this study and it is a very in depth study also the methods of ethnography include macro ethnography micro ethnography macro ethnography we study broadly defined cultural group groupings such as indians in micro ethnography we narrowly define cultural groupings like young working class women members of congress etc then comes emic perspective here we are the members of the given culture perceive how the members of the given culture perceive their world this thing is studying in ethnic perspective how the how non member perceive and interpret the behaviors is being studied and situational reduction it refers to the view that ethnographers that social structures and social dynamics emerge from and may be reduced analytically to the accumulated effects of micro situational interactions then symbols it is a focus of ethnographic research and here the cultural connotations associated with the symbols are focused are being focused then cultural patterning we are observing the cultural patterns that forms the relationships then tacit knowledge it is deeply embedded cultural beliefs which are assumed in culture's way of perceiving the world then comes meta analysis it is pooling information to confirm and generalize with the statistical procedures to review and synthesize empirical findings systematically so the researchers which the researcher will find as many study as possible on the same topic and uses many statistical methods to reanalyze it so next comes 
the fourth unit it is called it is the current trends in social psychology and ethical issues that comes under social psychological research so it is the utilization of social psychological principles and research methods in real world settings to solve individual and societal problems then how social psychology is related with or what are the other fields or how we can apply social psychology in different fields so population psychology in population psychology how we can apply so social psychology in population psychology it concentrates on the effects of how rapid expansion of the number of humans on this planet on and on efforts to control this expansion and the social psychology is important and changing important in changing attitude and enhancing sensitivity then health psychology how the different lifestyle changing and development stress work life and social support family environment affects our health then comes environmental psychology how stress noise temperature pollution affects our behavior so industrial organizational psychology is another application area for social psychology here we are analyzing the behaviors in work settings the conflicts the resources and the grudges that can cause individuals to behave in a certain manner and in legal system and social psychology we are learning about eyewitness testimony and defendants etc the growing influence of cognitive perspective can be seen in the field of social psychology like nowadays the cognitive factors are being emphasized in the field of social psychology like attitudes beliefs values inferences etc so we are giving more attention to the cognitive processes that underlie them how our memory operates what are human re- reasoning processes how a new information is integrated with the existing schemas etc the researchers so are also studying how feelings shapes thought and how thought shape feelings and a multi- multicultural perspective can also be seen in this area now comes some of the major ethical issues in social psychological research first one is deception deception can be seen as essential in the field of social research in in many of the fields uh, in many of the researches in social psychology there are many kinds of deception implicit deception it occurs when the actual situation is so different from what the subject or the individual expect that they behave under incorrect assumptions next comes technical deception here the equipments and the procedures of an experiment are misrepresented then comes role deception here the subject or the participant may actually be a confederate of the experimenter or the experimenter may pose as a fellow student in a classroom these are all meant for reducing the biases that can be possible in psychological researches then comes informed consent the subject here the subject must voluntarily agree to participate in social psychological research without any force and must understand what the participation involves then comes debriefing here we are explaining in some detail the purpose and the procedure of the research then comes minimal risk 
the possible risk for participating in the research are should not be greater than ordinarily encountered in daily life the participant must be allowed to make decisions based on adequate information also so it is meant for reducing the risk among the participants of social psychological research so with this we are ending our unit 3 and 4 hope the session was useful for you thank you